Hi and welcome to another very exciting tutorial in our 24 days of Swift tutorials series this Christmas season. Today is day three and what we're going to do is something extremely cool. We're going to create a 3D Earth with scene kit. This is what it is going to look like. So we have a star system. Uh, we have this animating 3D sphere that looks like planet Earth. So it's going to be really cool. And tomorrow we're going to put this same Earth into a real environment using AR kit, augmented reality. So make sure to subscribe to this channel to not miss this tutorial tomorrow and also the rest of the tutorials. And just a quick reminder, um, that I have created this Slack workspace for our community, which already had a great start in the last two days since it exists. So uh, check out the join link in the video description below to join this Slack community where you can ask your questions about uh, programming, about Swift and iOS development and help each other out from time to time. I will also have the chance to help you out there. Um, so definitely check this out in the video video description below. And now let's get right started. Now let's just have a quick look at the real thing here in the simulator. And what we have here is a rotating earth. And if I click it, then I can stop the rotation and also rotate the whole scene, moving my camera. I can also pinch out and pinch in. And this is a really cool simulation also with these stars particle system. And now what we are going to do is creating this whole project completely from scratch. So even if you've never done anything with scene kit before, you're going to learn a lot about 3D and scene kit in this tutorial. And and um, this is going to be really useful for applying all that knowledge tomorrow when we're dealing with augmented reality. So I'm now starting Xcode, creating a new project, and I'm not going to select my game project here. Instead, I'm going to select a single view application so that we can do everything from scratch. And I'm going to call that 3D Earth, hit next, and create that on my desktop. And with that project ready, what I'd like to do is jump right into my main storyboard. And what we have here is a view controller with a view. But since we're using SceneKit now, we cannot really work with this view. What we should do instead is working with a SceneKit view. So I'm going to remove this complete view here and only have a empty view controller here right now. So in my object library down in the bottom right corner, I'm going to type scene kit, S-C-E-N-E -E kit. And there you will find a scene kit view. And surprisingly, you're also getting an AR kit scene kit view, which we're going to deal with tomorrow. But for now, we're going to have a look at the scene kit view, which I'm going to place into my view controller. And this is going to be my scene kit view. And we're going to work with that in a second. So this is the first step. Now we have a scene kit view that we can use and work with. Now we are going to prepare our view controller to work with this scene kit view. And the first thing that we should do here is also import scene kit to our view controller. And then in view to load, what we need is a so-called scene kit scene. This is where we have our coordinate system, our root nodes, and so on. This is where we're going to work with. So first of all, let's create such a scene, which is an SCN scene. And this is very important. And with this scene ready, we can now create our get our scene view from our view controller. We could create an outlet for that, or we can do something very simple as well. What we can do is create a scene view object right here using self.view and cast that to an SCN view. And this is because the view that we're using now in our view controller is an SCN view and not a standard UI view. And the important thing now is that our scene view actually holds a scene kit scene. We already created that scene. We didn't do anything with it, but we have it. So what we can do is use our scene view 
and assign a scene right here. And the scene that we are, uh, that we want to assign is just scene. So this is what we have now for starters. Now what we can also do is show some statistics in our scene view. For example, we can uh, see the frame count, so the FPS, and some timing information. So I set set statistics or show statistics to true. What I can also do is set a background color. Since we're going to be in space, I'm using my scene view and set the background color to black, so UI color and black. And what I also like to do is having the ability to manipulate the camera. We're going to have to do that in the future, so why not do it now? So using the scene view, access the allows camera control and set this to true as well. And with that, we actually have a basic configuration for scene kit in our project. So I can run this, let's say on an iPhone 8 simulator, and see if this indeed works. And if we get some statistics at the bottom of our screen, we should be good to go with our project. And as you can see, we can see nothing yet. And this is because we are not looking through a camera yet. And this is very important when working with SceneKit, we always need a camera. So let's have a quick look at the coordinate system of SceneKit and let's imagine that in the center of our coordinate system, we had this cube. And along the Z axis, we most likely have our first camera set up and this is what we are going to do. And along this Z axis, we are going to position our camera so that we can look into our scene. So let's go back here and right after we create our empty scene, let's now create a camera node. And a camera is actually just a SCN node, so a scene kit node. So let's create a camera node and initialize it with SCN node. And we're making a camera out of this node by taking the camera node, accessing the camera property, and then initialize that with SCN camera. And with that, we have a camera and we can now use our scene and its root node and add our child node, which is our camera node. And with that, we have a camera. We can run this in the simulator, and then we should be able to see our statistics that is part of our scene. And indeed, we have our statistics right down at the bottom of the screen. So this is a basic setup. So what I'd also like to do now is if we have a look at the um, top of our screen, we still have the battery indicator right there. I'd like to turn off the status bar. So what I can do is right below view to load, I can set the computed property prefers status bar hidden. And so I'm adding to this override of this computed property preferred status bar hidden. I'm adding some curly braces and simply return true right here. And if I now run this again in the simulator, then the status bar with the battery indicator should be gone. And indeed it is. So now that we have our system ready, we have um, our scene uh, our scene kit scene, we have our scene kit view, so now we can actually start putting something into this view. And I'd like to start with, uh, with our star system or our star particles. And to get something like that, scene kit offers great particle systems, so what I'd like to do is hitting file, new file, and there you're going to find in the section for resources, you're going to find SceneKit particle system file. And I can hit next here. And as you can see, there's already some great presets that we can use like bokeh, confetti, fire, rain, and so on. But also at the very bottom, we can find stars. And this is what I'd like to use. So I hit next and create. And this is now my SceneKit uh, particle system. And I'd like to rename that actually. So let's call this um, stars, particles, and as you can see, this looks really, really nice. And this is this gives, gives us kind of the impression that we are flying through space. But since we're not flying through space in our simulation, we're just staring at our planet, what I'd like to do is just turn off the velocity. And as you can see here in the attributes inspector, we have a linear velocity of three at the moment, and I'm going to turn that down to zero. And this should give us a not moving star system, but what we have now is just a 
plain surface of stars and not a real uh, volume of, of, of stars that we'd like to have. So what I can do instead is to change our shape from plane to sphere. And what this does is we can have a look at these stars and as you can see they're always stars right now. It's a little bit hard to see since they're white and we have a gray background but I think you get the point. And with that ready we can go back into our view controller which is actually our game view controller and we can add this to our um, to our scene. So right before uh, we create our scene view and after we've created our camera node what I can do now is create some stars so I'm just creating a stars object here and I can initialize this stars object now with SCN particle system and here I just need to provide a name and a directory so the name is just our name of our file which is stars particles dot SCNP and we actually do not have to specify a directory here since this is going to search in the root of our project. And with that we have our stars particles imported into our code and now I can just use my scene and its root node and add a particle system which is going to be our star system. And if I now run this again in the simulator we should have a nice little star system in our scene but I have forgotten to unwrap this but this should work if I did not misspell anything and now let's have a look at the simulator and as you can see we now have a star system and since we've turned on allows camera control we can even have a look around in our star system and this looks already really cool and now we can think about how we can add an earth to that and to do that we actually need an object that we can put into our scene that should look like a planet so let's do that and for that I'm going to create a new class which I'm going to call earth node so let's click on view controller on our view controller.swift file create a new um, file by pressing command N on the keyboard and then I'm selecting a coker touch class hit next and this is going to be the earth node class and this should be a subclass of SCN node so a scene kit node let's hit next and create that and as you can see we get an error here because we cannot subclass of this at the moment because uh, this is an undeclared type and this is because Xcode automatically use the import of UIKit and what we need here is to import SceneKit so that we can access all the necessary classes. And with that done we can now actually continue initializing our earth node. So I'm overriding the init function also call, uh, uh, calling super init right here and now we can decide what kind of a shape or what kind of a geometry our earth node should have. So I'm accessing self and geometry which is the geometry that is attached to our node and I could now initialize this with SCN box for example or I can also initialize this with SCN sphere and give it an initial radius of 1. And then what I can also do is actually um, giving our, uh, our, our earth node a color so we now have a sphere but I can also use self geometry first material diffuse and contents and just assign UI color and let's say blue right here and with that we have created our planet and we can also uh, create the um, init with coder function that is required now so let me just quickly fix that here and also call super init with coder and a decoder right here so that our class is uh, correctly defined and now we can actually add our earth to our game view controller or just our view controller as we've called it at the moment. So right after we have added our stars right here I can now also create an earth node by simply initializing earth node with our new classes initializer and then I can use my scene and its root node and add a child node which is going to be my 
Earth node. So let's now quickly run this in the simulator and see if we can really already see something in our scene. And as you can see, there is no planet Earth yet. And this has two reasons. The first reason is there is no light that shines on our planet, and uh, so it's it's black. And also there is our camera might not be positioned correctly because our Earth at the moment is directly inner center of our uh, of our scene, and so also is the camera. So we are not really able to see our sphere yet. So let's change that. First of all, let's adjust the camera position. And therefore, I'm just uh, going right above. We add our camera using our camera node and its position and then changing its position. And since we're in 3D space, we need a vector for that, an SCN vector 3, so that we get three coordinates, which is the X position. Let's set this to uh, to zero. The Y position, let's also set this to zero and let's uh, set the Z position to 5 so that we can actually have a look at our sphere. And then what we also should do is add some light. So after we have added our camera, let's add some light here. And therefore, we just create a light node. And we can initialize that again with an SCN node. And to make to, uh, to turn on the light, we use this light node. We access its light property and initialize this with SCN light. And then what we can do is choose a specific light type. So we want to have an omni light type. So I'm using the light node, its light property, and its type. And as you can see, we can choose from a directional light, an omni light, a probe light, ambient light, and we're going to use an omnidirectional light. And this is going to look very nice together with our plans later. And the last thing that our light should know before we can position it, uh, before we can add it to our node is its position. So what I'd like to do here is take the light node, use its position property and also use an SCN vector to give it a location. Let's use X zero. Let's move it a little bit upwards with the Y coordinate by 10. And let's use two for the Z position. And then we can use our scene, its root node, add a child node, and this is going to be our light node. And now if we run this in the simulator, we should be able to see a colossal representation of planet Earth. So there is our blue sphere. And as you can see, there is a light and we have shadows and we can already do the basic stuff that should be expected of our Earth but it doesn't really look like Earth. And this is because we haven't added any real imagery yet or textures yet. And this is what we can do right now. And in the video description down below, you will find um, a folder with four images, a specular image, a normal image, a diffuse image, and an emission image. And these three images represent what we can see. For example, let's start with the diffuse image, which just gives us the coloring for our planet. And this is going to be mapped on our sphere. And this tells SceneKit, the diffuse um, property tells SceneKit, which color should be applied where. What we also have is the specular, which tells SceneKit where reflections should happen. So we have more reflection where it's more white and less reflection where it's darker. And then we have the normal image, which tells us about the topographical, the topographical information of our planet. And this is really cool. And you get all can get all of these images from NASA, for example. I have a really ro low resolution at the moment because I could find these images more easily in the Apple documentation. But um, you can, of course, use high res images that you get from NASA here. And the last image that we have is the emission image, which is also really cool because this tells us where actually our planet has light or where it emits light. So um, this is cool if it's darker or we reach the dark side of our planet where no light is pointed at from the sun. We can actually still see where electrical light um, gives us light or emits where our planet actually emits light and where it does not. So what we can do here is opening up our assets folder in Xcode, 
take all of these images and drop them right into our assets folder. Then we can open up our earth node and just make some adjustments right here. So instead of using the diffuse content or for the diffuse content, I just use a blue color. I'm now using a UI image, which is actually named uh, diffuse, diffuse. And I can just copy this line of code a few times um, and change the property right here. So let's first of all start. We have the diffuse ready. Now let's use the specular. Now where is the problem here? Oh, I forgot the quotation mark here. So just quickly add that. And now we have the specular, we have the emission, and we have the normal. And as you can see, we're just adding this to the first material property of our geometry from our earth node. And there we have diffuse, specular, emission, and normal. And now we also have to name these images correctly or get enter the correct name for these different images. So we have specular, we have emission, emission, and we have normal. And now let's run this in the simulator and see how this actually looks and what we can do to uh, even improve the look of our planet in a second. So here we go. The SAR planet already looks really cool. Um, we have um, we have the top uh, topography. We have some shininess, as you can see when we uh, look at the water. There we have this little reflection. We do not have this reflection um, on solid rock. We only have that on water. And what we can do, for example, is change the shininess of this reflection. So I can go into my earth node again and change self geometry, first material and shininess and set this to 50, for example. And this is going to give us a completely different look here. So as you can see now, we get this really tiny reflection now and this now more looks like a glass surface for example but you can of course play around with these settings as you wish and now the last thing I'd like to do is adding a little rotation animation to my planet so that it spins for itse itself um, as it usually does and therefore I create a new action here which is an SCN action and this is going to be a rotate action and I actually want this to rotate by a specific angle and around a specific vector. So what I can do now here is define this angle which is um, measured in radians. So to turn our planet uh, by 360 degrees we have to convert these 360 degrees by taking pi divided by 180 and then we should actually convert that to a CG float, so CG float, and we should be good to go. And now we have to specify around which axis we actually want to rotate our planet. And we want to rotate it uh, uh, around the Y axis. So I'm defining a vector here with X zero, Y one, and Z zero. And with that we have um, specify the value for which um, axis we want to rotate our planet around and now we can maybe say a duration or a specified duration of eight seconds for this animation and this should infinitely repeat itself so let's create a repeat action here with SCN action repeat forever and then the action is what we want to repeat forever and then we use self run action, repeat action, and we are done. We can run this in the simulator and should have a rotating Earth, which should look really cool. And indeed, it does rotate. We can also rotate around Earth. We can uh, pinch out, zoom in, very cool. So for now, we have placed planet Earth 
into a scene kit view and not into the real world. This is what we're going to do tomorrow using um, the uh, augmented reality kit from Apple. But now you have a basic understanding how to create objects in scene kit that we can later use in augmented reality kit. So I hope you enjoyed this video so far. Um, if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe to this channel if you do not want to miss any of these videos um, of the 24 um, tutorial series this Christmas season. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you tomorrow.